We are here at Dice Tower Con, and I'm with Joshua Lobkowitz, developer at Gray Fox Games, and he is here demoing Captain's Wager. So, give us a quick rundown of Captain's Wager. What kind of game is it? Uh, Captain's Wager is a betting and hand management game. Uh, players take on the role of uh, captains of a rogue pirate crew, uh, sending their crew off on adventures in an effort to collect the most treasure. All right. So what is kind of the typical turn structure of the game, and can you even give us like a sample round? Yeah, sure. Uh, in every round of the game, players are going to bet from these five treasure decks. So every player that is included in a game will ante to a communal pool, and this becomes the treasure that you're gambling over. Every player will also have a hand of crew cards that they will play every round, and rounds. Uh, a game round is called an adventure, which is three of these encounters. And on each encounter, players will play one of their crew cards and execute the effect that is listed on that card. After everybody has played, whoever played the highest value will claim the encounter. And then after all three of the encounters have been claimed, if they were claimed by three separate players, the treasure will be divided among those players. If one player has a single majority, they will claim all of the treasure in the pot. Um. Now, I see all the treasures face down. Do you ever know what the value of that treasure actually is? Yeah, absolutely. The treasure decks the players have are identical decks to begin with, but they contain 15 unique items. And so those items range in value between 2 and 4 gold. When you have claimed those treasures as rewards, you bank them for their gold value, but certain effects will let you put them in your hand to use them for their item effect. And these give you a variety of abilities that can help you manipulate the strength of your crew, the strength of the opponent's crew, the size of the pot, just various things to help you win more, put, more treasure or prevent your opponents from doing the same. So I'm assuming the, the crew deck is going to be kind of randomized at the beginning of the round. Everybody gets, you, know, you said, four cards. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I get a, get a hand of just all really low cards and I'm not going to win anything. Why would I want to throw money into the middle? Uh, in general, you don't want to throw money into the middle. It is kind of, it is a poker-esque game. It's steampunk pirate poker. If you think your hand is very weak, you may stay around for some of the pot because the effects on the crew will let you manipulate the game state for the other players. But at a certain point, you gotta know when to fold and bow out so you're not giving your treasure away to people with a stronger crew than you. Gotcha. Um, is there any benefit to folding other than obviously not just giving away more money? Yeah, absolutely. On a player's turn, their options are gonna be to bet, borrow, or steal. So when you bet, you're gonna risk your own treasure. When you borrow, you're going to play a crew card, but you're not going to risk anything. You're going to take a loan token, which you have to pay off at the end of the game, but you've limited the pot size for other players. If even that is too risky for the hand you have, you can take the steal option, which is folding, and thematically, you've left the adventure and gone off and done some piracy elsewhere. So you get a small token of gold from your raiding efforts, and you get items from your deck to help you win a future encounter. So if you have to bow out, you should be setting yourself up to do better on the next round. What is the end game? Uh, the game ends when one player is completely out of treasure. On any okay. round where a player has no treasure in their treasure deck, that will be the final round. And at the end of that adventure, we score. Players get points for the cards that they have claimed. They get points for cards that are left in their treasure deck. And some items are worth points if they're in your hand as well. So, who would like this game? I guess, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, is there, like, if I like A, you'll really like Captain's Wager. Um, the, the most common correlation we find is that people who play poker really like this game. For gamers, there's a little bit of a trick-taking element, so trick-taking players like this game if they can handle a little bit of chaos. Because the player abilities have a lot of interesting effects, it doesn't feel like pure trick-taking. There's a lot of clever maneuvers you can make. And so it's had some success with Magic players as well who like to try and find the best combos and abilities. So how many does this play and how long does it take? Uh, it takes two to five players. It lasts anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes in general. Do you find it plays very similarly from two to five, or is it a very different game at two than it is at five? Oh, it, it's very different at two and five. Um, the five player experience feels a lot more like a poker game. There's a lot of sort of swings and back and forth and chaos based on all the players' items. When you get to lower player counts, it becomes more like a trick-taking game, and it becomes very tactical about evaluating the values of your hand versus your only other opponent, as opposed to a whole field. So let's say I wanted to get a copy of Captain's Wager, where would I do that? 
Uh, Captain's Wager is in shipment from the factory right now. It'll arrive uh, on the shores of the U.S. in a couple of weeks. It should be available for pre-order presently at all your local game stores and online retailers. You should see it hitting shelves in about a month. Well, I think that's all I've got for you, so thank you for your time. Great, thanks so much.